when Brother Bob Yoder owned a bookstore, there was a, a book or books in his store that you'll find in the uh, Christian bookstores now that, that I recommend to you. Uh, and it's the writings of E.M. Bounds. E.M. Bounds was a man of prayer, one of the greatest men of prayer that I've ever heard or read about. He was one of the few men that wrote on prayer. And it was uh, in reading a book that E.M. Bounds had written, probably here with some of my books close by, that I ran across uh, one day um, one of the chapters, or maybe it was the whole book, but uh, I believe it was a chapter on how to pray for an apostle. And he simply went to the letters of Paul and uh, pointed out such scriptures as Ephesians 6 and 19. At the close of the letter to Ephesus, if you'd like to look at these with me, I think it would be wonderful. At the close of the letter to Ephesus, he's given us these instructions about um, and it was the church at Ephesus at that time, but it's, of course, the Word of God to all of us, uh, 1,900 years plus later. And he, he mentions, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And, of course, it's been quite a um, shock to most all of Christendom that there's only maybe one reference or maybe two that we know of in all of Scripture that talks about praying outside of the saints. The concentration on prayer is for the saints and especially is the concentration of prayer for the leaders. And you can see this. Uh, he's telling us to put on this armor to pray for all saints. But then he says... And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And after being with Brother Helm 22 years and reading the writings of Paul most all of my life, I see that the gospel is truly a mystery. That is, discipleship. What Jesus really intended for us to hear and really intended for us to respond to is really a mystery. And it's unknown. And the fact that the Holy Spirit operates that some of us will hear tonight is a great blessing. In fact, it's a, we're tr trying to claim that ourselves, that we may be able to hear. I recall that when Brother Helm read the last chapter of his book, I'd never heard a thing of it, I don't think. And when he started to read that last chapter, which is one of the great chapters in any books or any book, uh, I couldn't even hear the first few lines. I just couldn't hear it. It was later that the Lord showed me that it was my own hardness of heart that prevented my hearing. In other words, that deposit of hardness when the Holy Spirit came just simply threw up a veil. And it meant I was going to have to walk with God going to have to deny self, experience uh, some measure of suffering before a chapter out of a book that's really anointed could be read to me and me here. Uh, I think that's true for the Holy Scriptures and especially true for the Scriptures that we have in front of us. But Paul says, Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, I don't have all the references, but the next reference that I found is in Colossians 4. I just went through the back of Paul's letters, and I found Colossians 4, 3 and 4. Now, notice in, in the Ephesians, he says, pray for me. But in, in Colossians 4, perhaps we should read the second verse, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. But then he gets himself personally in this in the next verse, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So he's asked for prayer for who? 
Well, let's find out in the beginning who in the world is involved here. There must be more than one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother. So for us, he's saying, pray for me, pray for us, pray for Timothy. That's two of us. But then he said, now I need special prayer that I may make manifest this mystery of Christ. And uh, so we see a, a single prayer in Ephesians, then a prayer for us, but a special request for himself that he could make it the mystery of Christ manifest. Now, the next one I want to call your attention to is in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 25. We read this, some of us read this daily. And he simply says, brethren, pray for us. Well, I wonder who that is. Let's go back to the beginning of First Timothy and find out who this is. Paul and Silvanus or Silas and Timotheus or Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians. So you have Paul, Silas, and Timothy. And he says, brethren, pray for us. But I think we need verse 17 to get how often we should pray for them. And in verse 17, he says, pray without ceasing. So pray without ceasing for us, Silas, Paul, and for Timothy. And then the last reference I have is in 2 Timothy, or 2 Thessalonians, the second one. It's just, you don't even have to turn a page if you have the Thompson chain. Uh, in 3, and that chapter is opened with the request for prayer. And I have, the Lord has uh, helped me through uh, uh, E.M. Bounds to, uh, to, to pray for this, pray in this way for God's servants, as is requested here, but especially for Brother Ham. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Well, we'll have to look at this letter, Second Timothy. Paul... Silas and Timothy. Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Can you tell me what NIV says on that? What does it mean? Okay. That it may be spread rapidly and be honored. That's what the NIV is that the NIV? Yes, thank you. Uh, so we get a little explanation there with a different translation. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. To tell you the truth, Paul needed delivering from some of his former colleagues because when the, more, the deeper in trouble he got, the more problems he had, uh, the more they preached the gospel in contention against him, preaching differently. And his response was, well, at least they're preaching the gospel, but it didn't make it right. Nevertheless, he says that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. And of course, you know, Paul suffered a lot. And uh, when he recount some of these sufferings, you could see why he asked that we should pray for him. Now, an unusual thing happened. I thought this would be a good introduction. An unusual thing happened yesterday morning about 7 o'clock. Um, Sandy got a call from Brother Helm, and he put out a letter to all of fellowships. Now, has that been passed out? Does everyone have a copy of that here? Did you come in and have a copy of that? Well, if you'd like to look at that with me, I thought after I read this, see, I could preach on this and then make the application today, but this is the application. Here's a letter written by a servant of the Lord who's had great need. And uh, when I was praying between 4 and 5, joining our pastors here today, the Holy Spirit was operating. <laughs> it's in my heart now. That Jesus was operating on these petitions and uh, knowing that that means that they're effective with God, I wanted to come and review this letter with you and also to help you to know how to pray, uh, help us to get acquainted with some of the petitions to pray for Brother Ham. 
And so here's the letter he dictated to Sandy yesterday morning. I have a rough copy here, uh, but my notes were on this copy when I went through it today uh, during my prayer time. Dear ones in Jesus, when my surgery took place on January 7th, and the Lord really the Lord really helped me very much. A catheter was placed in the urethra large enough for irrigation. The catheter was in place on Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday, and it was taken out on Monday morning. Then I was so anxious, but expelling began in about three hours. I was so thankful for about five to 600 cc's. Then in another two hours, a similar experience and continuing for approximately 10 to 12 hours expelling about two quarts of liquid. This was good. Nobody knows how to appreciate this until they get into trouble like this. And my father was rushed to the hospital in an emergency because with, without being able to get the water out of your body, you're in trouble in just a few hours, so severely so that you don't much care what they do. And uh, dad, of course, was operated on successfully and uh, and we're very grateful for the health that God is giving him in this area for these uh, several years. So Brother Ham said, that was good. Indeed, that was good. So they let me come home. They had all been so wonderful to me at the hospital. All the doctors, nurses, and attendants, I came home feeling good. And we put out the calls and made that report. On Tuesday, about 10 to 10.30, I got into my bed. In about an hour, I was awakened with a light chill, which surprised me. Then another and another and another. Because he thought himself that things might go as it has for, I think, maybe most men. Uh, but it didn't. Here's a chill and another and another. The expelling then on Tuesday afternoon was much less than at the hospital. The enemy began to oppose in body and mind. So we are desirous that our people in Jesus will have faith to pray, to believe for the Lord our God, the Holy Spirit, to go to this prostate gland. Now right there is your first petition. To go to the prostate gland and remove or take away the swelling or infection or affliction or the battle that is ensuing. Uh, if you don't know how to pray, there's your first way to pray. So when I started praying this afternoon, I said, Jesus, would you go to this afflicted area and would you remove, I didn't go to take away yet, I said, would you remove the swelling? Would you remove the infection? Would you remove the affliction or would you remove the battle? And I got operated somewhere on those petitions while I was praying. See, and I got really excited because Sandy just get, given me this letter last night. I'm so thankful she worked all day yesterday. We got these letters out in overnight mail and then followed them up with calls this afternoon because there was a correction to be made. And that correction was made. And most all the letters had gotten to where they were supposed to be. And we believe now that prayer is coming back. Well, you see, we gave a good report. And apparently, people didn't pray without ceasing. They just said, thank you, and went on to other concerns. But when we're dealing with a life so important as his, you really can't hardly quit. You've just got to stay with it. And we've got to pray without ceasing, but God's grace. And so uh, then my next petition was this, Lord, remove, he said, or take away. Because see, God may, the Holy Spirit knows the exact petition. For instance, at this hour, there is a praise that is acceptable before God. I don't know what it is, but it could be hallelujah. It could be praise the Lord. It could be thank you, Jesus. It could, I don't know what the petition is. But there's some petition, and then that changes. I, I didn't know that except he told me. And the Holy Spirit operates that there's a petition that goes right straight through the, through the throne. Isn't that wonderful to know? That there's a praise and that that praise changes, you know. And, uh, but as you pray and you praise the Lord, sometimes you may feel the power fall. And you'll know that that petition has gone through to the throne. Isn't it wonderful to be before God and be say, holy, holy, holy. I mean, really be under the... Be under the anointing, and all of a sudden, the power hits. And you know that that worship's going straight through to the throne, and that's a great experience. And think, because of the shed blood of Christ, you and I can go right into the Holy of Holies, 
not just plead for mercy, which we do, ask for help in time of need, but we can just praise him. And as we find our petitions, there will be one or more, and then that may change, will change, that will be the one that will be heard before the throne at that very hour. Now that's exciting, you know? And it'll really be exciting when it happens in your heart. Just like when I said it was exciting, something happened in my heart. And uh, I know that you'll find it exciting when you praise God in this manner. So you're, so next you could pray, take away the swelling, the infection, the affliction, or Lord, take away the battle. Well, that's quite a, that's quite, right there is a, is a powerful lot of prayer. And, uh, but you know what it'll take you if you take these petitions, these petitions, some people find it a long time to pray five minutes. I want you to know you can't even get through this first pray, first page in less than five minutes. There's no way. It's like you can't take a test, an exam in Mr. Young's class or somebody else's class. There's no way unless it's, well, you, if you had a five minute test, but most of your tests are longer than five minutes, aren't they? Well, most most successful prayers are longer than five minutes. In this case, if you're searching for the petition, you say, oh God, go. And then you say, oh God, remove the swelling or the infection. Remove, and see, it's fair to pray them all. Remove the affliction, oh Lord, that's placed upon us by the enemy. Or Lord, remove the battle. See, so you go through those things, and then you start back, you say, oh God, take away the swelling. Oh, Lord Jesus, take away the infection. Oh, Lord Jesus, take away the infliction. Take away the battle. Oh, God, take it away in Jesus' name. As I plead the blood of Jesus, as I prevail with thee, oh, Lord, my heart is clear. Oh, God, would you please take this away? Would you, Lord, come against this? Go to this afflicted area. Well, you can see there's a few minutes taken up right there. And we're just on the first line here. All right. Now, he says, pray not only that the Holy Spirit will go to this afflicted area, remove or take away swelling, infection, affliction, or the battle. Then he says, pray for ourselves. I like this. Pray for Jesus' people, that's us, to plead for faith. Holy faith once delivered, (laughs) once delivered to the saints. You know how it is in Scripture. And so the petition here, and he said, to believe that God in Christ's healing will go up through the urethra and center the prostate where the tissue was taken out and do a miracle. I've got this underlined three places. Lord, go up through the afflicted area and do a miracle of healing. Right there it is. So you finish your uh, petitions here, and now you're saying, now Lord, grant me the faith. Grant your people who's praying for your servant and your servants the faith to be, the faith to believe that God through Christ healing will go up to the afflicted area. You, maybe you've never been taught to pray. I'm teaching you tonight by God's grace through this letter right here. So I've never, I don't know if I've ever done this. Maybe I, t- once before in the old church got out a few of these petitions for the apostles when I first read E.M. Bounds. But as far as teaching you to pray, now I've had more operation in my heart. On this stage, since I've been before you than I've had, as far as I can remember, in one month of services. I had more operation in Guy Williams' prayer than I had in a prayer a long, long time. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, That isn't you. That happens to be me. It means that somehow Jesus has helped me to be before him in prayer, not to grieve the Holy Spirit so the channel in my heart's clear. I'm not saying that it's you. I'm saying it's me. That Jesus has helped me. So here I am. I've got a sore heart. And I've just been in services 40 minutes or uh, 35 minutes because we were about five minutes in prelude time. But see, here I've been here and God's operated so much in my heart. Well, I've been on my, I didn't get out of bed until today. And only Jesus kept me out of bed at three o'clock because I thought I'd have to go back. But I thought if I could stay in my study and pray. And did you know, by the time I finished at five o'clock, I felt strong like I did, like I do now. I want to thank you. I, I preached so hard Sunday night. You know why I was in bed two days. And I'm trusting that won't come around too often. Uh, I was excited and I was uh, stirred and you knew it and everybody knew it. And, and uh, so anyway, um, it's taken that much time to get my strength back. But oh, thank God that he helped me in prayer today. So we're praying, Lord, go up to the afflicted area and do a miracle of healing. 
All right there. Do a miracle. E. Stanley Jones said, ask for a miracle, believe for a miracle, and receive a miracle. That's what E. Stanley Jones. Now, not just not some preacher over the radio. That's a man that was a truly a proven apostle of God. He said, ask for one. He said, believe for one. And he said, receive one. That's what E. Stanley Jones said. Dad, you and mother were with him out there when God did miracles out there that was so, you told me there was a girl that couldn't wear her shoes. And they asked Brother Helm to pray for her, and you saw those feet come together so that she could get her shoes on. You also told me, Mother, that there was arthritis that appeared in the form of some kind of uh, blisters all over the body. And you said Brother Helm prayed for her. Now, East Stanley was watching all this. He said Brother Helm prayed for her. Those things dried up right like that. They saw that happen. There was another two or three other things that happened. And when... when uh, Whenever Brother Helm got through with the service, why E. Stanley Jones said this is a modern Pentecost. He said this is an up-to-date Pentecost. And then he went to Brother Helm and he said, now Brother Helm, he said, I would, Brother Lauren, I think he called him, Brother Lauren, I'd like for you to take over. That's what E. Stanley Jones said. You know what, you know what Brother Helm told E. Stanley Jones? He said, E. Stanley Jones, you are my elder. You will lead the service and I will follow. But what, just see the childlikeness of both of those men? Isn't it a great thing? You've heard Brother Helm tell how when they were together. See, I'm telling you about, I'm telling you about perhaps the greatest Christian in the 20th century other than Lauren Helm himself. I know that Wormbrand and Jones and Brother Helm are three of the greatest in the 20th century. Now there may be some others I've forgotten, but that, those are on my mind right now. And to think if these two men were together and Mary Webster... It's about the only thing I don't remember getting to go to was that first meeting out there. And I don't know whether I wasn't invited. I don't know how I didn't get in on that. But somehow I missed that great happening. How many of you were with me when you heard Brother Simpson, the black man, pray over in the Holy Land? You remember? You remember him praying that tremendous prayer? He came out of that. That's where he came out of that ostrom right there. And he has followed Brother Helm's letters all these years and loved him like he did East Stanley and Mary. And of course, you know how we got reacquainted with him. I think it was through Don and Barry. It's because of you. Because Barry went to Sterling and found Don. And Don is from the Sterling area. So he was acquainted with uh, Brother Simpson. And that brought us back in contact with him. And we helped raise some money to get him over. And of course, he's with Jesus now. And by the way, he died of prostate cancer. He died of prostate cancer. So we're really on important things, aren't we? 20% of all men get prostate cancer. Eventually, nearly all men have trouble in this area and, it, and cancer threatens if they live long enough. So it's, we're talking about a very important thing. And I just remember that Brother Simpson died of prostate cancer. Isn't that something? He said to Brother Helm, he wished he had never let them operate on him, but, but with that's in Jesus' hands and now he's in the presence of Jesus. All right, uh, we're to pray for God to do a miracle. And then he said, now see, we're praying that we'll have the faith of God, the faith of Christ, the, the faith once delivered to the saints in, in order to be able to pray for this miracle and for God to go to the afflicted area. And then it says that we are to pray uh, that the, against these opposing powers, principalities, and rulers of darkness of this world. The Holy Spirit has operated that we're presently facing the rulers of darkness. You probably can tell that in your hearts while I'm talking to you because it operates two or three times in mind while I'm talking to you. So, the, but it can be powers, it can be principalities. Uh, you know, there's other mentionings of things there, but uh, Paul mentions other things. But the rulers of darkness of this world, and operates in my heart again, of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, if you come against these powers and these principalities and these rulers of darkness, you want to be fortified. Now, because he's going to talk to us here on the next page about binding them. And we're coming against them. In the name of Jesus, we're asking for a miracle. Now, uh, these powers bring afflictions on us. And uh, they tie up services and they do other things. And we come against them in the name of Jesus, but we want to be sure to plead the blood and want to fortify ourselves and then cast them in the deep, pleading the blood over all living souls because they've blown in hell. They've blown in the deep or in the abyss. And we ask God to put them there by God's grace. And uh, that takes some, uh, listen, friends, uh, 
You want to know how to do that. But you want to be prayed up and you want to be, uh, you know, right with God before you start down this trail. He says, uh, against the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, and they will be cast into the deep. That's quite a petition there. <laughs> well, I want to tell you something. Can you see it takes longer than five minutes of prayer? <laughs> you just line these things up and just start down. You're on your way to work and you're just going one after the other. You have 15, 20 minutes of prayer right on that first page to get a hold of this effectively. See, it's great, isn't it? And now, and, and along the way, if the Holy Spirit operates, see, you may feel God working outwardly or you may feel the power within. If he operates, then you need to stay with that petition. Stay with that petition. See, before you move on to anything else, because you're effective before the throne and God's working a work. Uh, Sandy passed you fellows praying today and she heard you come against uh, the, what was it? The battles? Yeah, all the battles. And I had been on that myself, and Jesus had operated in my heart. She told me on the phone, I just passed the men praying in the hall, and they were praying against all the battles that are against Brother Ham. By the way, he isn't even talking about the greatest battle. He's just telling you about another battle. The one he's talking about, but there's a greater battle than that he isn't mentioning. But he does say in the letter, pray against all these battles. Well, they were praying against all the battles, and she went by, and she heard them pray, and the Holy Spirit operated all the battles. So while you were praying... Uh, Jesus, help him in all the battles. Help him, Jesus, in all the battles. While you were praying that way, the Holy Spirit was operating. I was at home praying the same way. That touches my heart while I'm Glory telling you now. So see, we're real. Wow, this is great. Yes. Could it be that 88 is going to see us more effective in prayer? <laughs> I don't know. Something's going on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is great. Yeah. Now, listen. <laughs> she said, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. If you've been even halfway or just a little ways into her song, you're awful glad for what's being mentioned here because uh, somebody may be praying for you like this. I have a feeling, though, you know, I'm only asking to pray for four people myself, Otis, Jeannie, and Brother Ham. Brother Ham, first, I've never asked for any more than that except for occasional prayer where people have mentioned prayer. Someone says, I asked for something else, but I don't remember it. But I do remember for those four, and I never change that. Now, if you leave anybody out, leave me out. And I'm serious. Because I believe, if you, you want to know why I asked Sir Otis for prayer? Because I saw a long time ago that he was the layman that opened the door, and it was going to be a long battle for him and his family. I saw it. I saw it years ago. So I asked you to pray. I saw it coming. I've never changed it. So at our house, he and Arlene get prayed for every day. Oh, just pray for them every day. Boy, there's something happens to me when I tell you that. Oh, bro, God's right. I believe, I'm not for sure, but I believe Jesus is telling me I will perform it. When I'm telling you about Otis and Arlene, I believe the Holy Spirit's telling me I don't know for sure because I don't know the dealings, but you have an operation. See, I know a little, not much. Just a few things have drifted by and I've never tried to remember these things. But uh, when something happens to you, when I talk about Otis and Arlene, I pray for them every day. I believe Jesus is telling me I will perform it because something happens to me in a gift area. Isn't that great? Amen. See, now if I could stay true and not grieve the Holy Spirit, what would happen in the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months? What would happen to all of us? Because Jesus is working. See? We, and we here I'm teaching a class in prayer, and I, when I think that I tried to teach prayer at Park Place 20 some odd years ago, it makes me, I don't know what to do. I want to crawl out. But I don't know, I was trying at least 22 years, 24, 25 years ago, I was preached, teaching on prayer at Park Place uh, Church of God, and I had a group of people. I, I think Jesus. <laughs> well, it, we, at least I tried. I, I just I read all the best I could, and I studied E. Stanley Jones, and I studied Frank Laubach, and and Mother can remember some of those books that I'd read, and I try to bring those thoughts of the great saints to the people who were there. You see, and I was trying to help some of those people, and especially myself, get in a place of prayer by God's grace and by His mercy. Well. Praise the Lord. We're to pray um, for this faith once delivered to the saints that God's people may oppose and bind these powers. And there's your petitions. Lord, we oppose these powers. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We bind this opposition. That's on page two. 
that we, that's a royal we there, I've struck it out because it's for him and I put he, that he may be healed. So Jesus, we have come against these opposing powers, these rulers of darkness, and we bind these powers in the name of Jesus. We come against these that oppose him, and we ask that he may be healed and he may be delivered from this swelling and this irritation in the afflicted area. The Lord, that this expelling may be improved and it may become normal. Now, I believe we'll get a hold of this in the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on, he'll come to complete healing. And he's going to ask for a complete healing here in a minute. Pray that God will have mercy. Now, I like that. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Oh, God in heaven, have mercy. Oh, Jesus, I pray you'll have mercy. Lord, send mercy down from heaven. I believe if you will concentrate on him and his needs from now on by God's grace, I believe the Holy Spirit will reach out and touch people all around you. I believe he, he will reach, he'll touch people in your family. He'll take care. I don't think we can much pray for ourselves. And we heard Brother Helm say this week, and you didn't even know it. He said, I've only, he told me I've only once been able to pray for myself in all these years. In all of these years, I mean pray where the Holy Spirit, and yet most of us are praying for ourselves all the time. But he says, apparently God doesn't much allow that. Now you think of that. Yet most of us are saying, Lord, help me do this. Lord, get me through this. Lord, so on and so forth. And there's not, we're not getting anywhere much because he wants somebody else to take care of that. But you just come in with a great light on your face. Hallelujah. Here you are. Just come in to sit down back there. And he's having a great time. Isn't that wonderful? He's with me. And he hasn't been here from the beginning, but he's with me. Thank you, Jesus. That's great. So one time, I think he told me that the Holy Spirit had heard his prayer for himself. Well, that changed a lot of prayer. How's that saying? So you can verify that that's what he, so it, it's, it's left in our hands and those that, uh, you know, that believe God and uh, want to pray for him or led to pray for him. Pray that God will have mercy and that the healing will be sure throughout. That means thorough and complete. This area of my body, pray for the swelling, the affliction and infection. Pray, he says, and I put quotation marks, drive back the powers in the body. Oh, Lord, drive out the powers in the body. Drive back the powers in the body, I pray. Now, Sandy's taking this by longhand. She didn't keep her shorthand up. And he's, you try to talk to somebody an hour over the phone, and you know, how, you can say, uh, pray, drive back the powers. You're praying, P-R-A-Y. And he said, drive back the, D-R-I. And you're just, it is quite a thing to do this longhand. So I've asked her to, uh, to renew her shorthand as soon as she can. All of you ladies that took shorthand, you want to brush up on it and get it all under belt because one phone call in your life may be worth your taking shorthand for. Now, it may not be for everybody, but it's for everybody who can hear me. See, most all the secretaries I've known have dropped the shorthand. And, and when we needed it, we didn't have it. I mean, when I say needed, I mean for the kingdom. I mean for this age. I mean, I mean now. I mean we need it now. And that, that's, that's not true. I've had two or three here that could take shorthand. I recall your wife has taken shorthand for me several times. And, but see, we needed to get that out. So we're going to try to be ready because we don't know where this is going to lead, but we believe the Holy Ghost revival by God's grace. It may be that when the people heard that we've had a good recovery uh, and faith, some people let up in prayer and faith and cease holding on as much as is necessary. Pray for my mind, my soul, and my body. Look, look at my, here's my first page. No, no, where's my first page? Here's my first page, you can see right down at the bottom there. See that? Right down at the bottom, you can see that I've got Ten minutes of prayer just at the bottom. All right, look at my second page. Look, look at the clues to prayer. Look at the clues to prayer. Now, see, these are anointed statements. Anointed statements. Now, look at those. Look at the petitions. That's just for one man, one servant of Jesus. That'll keep a man, that'll keep a person busy for quite a while. But the, the, the thing about it is, it's how we ought to pray. He's giving us the petitions. And as we pray, uh, the Lord will let us know somewhere along the way that we're on the right trail. So we pray for the mind, the soul, and the body. For the enemy has opposed us severely. Pray that God, here's another one. Pray that God in Christ will rebuke this 
and bind powers and opposition. Now that sounds the same until you hear the next word, continually. Pray that God in Christ will rebuke this and bind powers and opposition continually. Not momentarily, but continually. Isn't that great? In other words, we've got to stay in prayer for him, and we've got to come against these uh, for the mind, the soul, and the body. We've got to bind these powers and come against this opposition continually. Not momentarily, but continually, because it's needed all the while. And he's going to say something on the third page that's very significant. I feel that I have so little, and I need much more. I have pleaded for more faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. I pray that you will all pray. Now, now we're being prayed for. Now, we're, he's praying for us. It's on the telephone. It's between 7 and 8 in the morning, and now you and I are getting prayed for. I pray that you will all pray. Persevere three Ps here. Pray, persevere, plead, and request faith for me in one of my hardest trials in mind and body. So here's a prayer for us that we will pray, persevere, plead, and request faith for him. Isn't that something? So we're saying, Jesus, we're praying now. We're persevering. Grant him faith, Lord. Faith is one, once delivered to the saints. Grant him in his seven, his Lord, a greater faith than he's ever had before. I heard Mother, uh, Mother Speck say that the devil fights you up to the door of death. She said he will oppose you, and she said he opposes you all the more. See, I thought the, if you were a saint, the older you got, the less trouble you had. I didn't know it was the opposite. And Christianity pretty much implies the opposite. But Brother Helm said it isn't so. And Mother Speck told me it wasn't so. She said the older you grow and the longer you go in faith, the harder, the thicker the battle. Could be that God can trust us more as we're praying and persevering and pleading and requesting faith for the ones who are leading us. God has given me peace and joy, but the devil has fought so severely in body, nerves, and mind, in accusations and buffetings. Some of those you know are coming through people. All of the dear ones may receive from God faith to believe this, that the prostate, canal, and all needs there, I think that's something, maybe there's something we don't know about. So here, here is the full petition. Lord, we pray for all needs there. All needs there, Jesus. See, that's not the heart. We've been praying for the heart. Not the throat. We've been praying for the throat. But we're praying for this area, which is such a battle at this particular time. Oh, God, we pray for all needs there. That takes care of the whole territory right there. All needs there can be met through God's power and Holy Spirit <clears throat> and healing of Jesus. Now, the letter continues. I need prayers so many. There are about two to 3,000 praying for me. That's in the fellowship. I'm so thankful. See, we sent out 36 letters and another letter, 37, and sent uh, Maranatha's up to him. So it's 38 letters that we sent out. I'm so thankful for each of these, everyone, for they are precious to the Lord and to us. When I inquire how much prayer I really need, when I say hundreds, thousands, or millions, the Holy Spirit operates on millions. Now, he has for several years but it's good to be reminded of this. When I count through the numbers, I do not get the witness until I get to six million. See, he says, Lord, do I need one million prayer, two million prayers, three, four, five. God says six million prayers. I need six million prayers a day. Now I want to ask you something. What does that indicate about his ministry? What does that indicate about the importance of his ministry? It indicates that it's very, 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 very important. I don't get far enough to get the witness. And it's coming. Jesus has been speaking to me several times tonight. So it's way up there somewhere. You see, the task is great. When Rebecca Pumphrey heard that I needed a great number of prayers, page 3, I was 56 to 57 years old. And she said, Oh, Lord, there is no way we get millions of prayers because there are only a few of us. Let my little prayer represent 200,000. And a miracle took place. And I became as a young man in body, even though I had been in 34 to 36 hours of meetings. Now, the strength that I put out Sunday night put me in bed that night and uh, forgot to ask David to come and be with me. 
And so that meant, that meant, a, a, meant a, quite a night. And then I was in bed all the next day, and in bed all the next day, and then Jesus helped me to get out of bed today. Now that was just one service for me. Imagine 34 to 36 hours. And Rebecca Pumphrey, is Martha here? Didn't I see Martha come in? Yeah, she said, Martha, Rebecca, her mother, who's one of the great persons of prayer in all the world, she said, Jesus, let my little prayer represent 200,000 prayers, and the sky is open, the gates of heaven open, the thing landed right on his head, and he got the miracle, and he went in the strength of that 40 to 60 hours, and he only, only required two to three hours sleep. <laughs> and you should have heard. He was calling every little bit, and God helped him so much. He was just like a young man. He was like he was when he was 17, 18 years old. God did that for a man who was 56 or 57. See, that's a tremendous thing. Dad, if a prayer was to hit you like that, and you, here you are, 76 years old, I don't know what you might do up and down this road. Yeah, amen. It could happen to you, Daddy. Isn't it great? Daddy, Moses was 120, and his natural strength was unabated, and his eyesight undimmed. I mean, 120 years old, and he was stronger than most any man in this building tonight. See, it'd have to be you, Butch, or it'd have to be some of the men who kept their bodies in tune, and uh, Moses be that strong. What do you think of that? At 120. Would you say that's a miracle? We're serving that kind of God. So we're trying to get that power loose through our lives, through the lives of the church, through two to 3,000 people. But see, I'm working with Scott Depot. That's my responsibility because I'm brokenhearted over that scripture in Philippi where he said, I have no man like mine and save Timothy. For all, all the church of God, mind their own things rather than the things of Christ. And I've been stricken by that for about 20 years. And the other scripture that bothers me, and I was looking at it tonight, he said, this thou knowest, at my first answer, at my first defense, no man, Christian or non-Christian, stood with me. And I'm stricken over that. Where, where, where was everybody? Jesus died and brought the church, and she was no more than 30, 40 years, and he's still in, the, still in the edge of the pristine glory. And yet Paul couldn't find but one man who thought like he did for all of Philippi, and he couldn't find anybody to stand with him at his defense before the tribunal. Nobody was there. I think it's, I can't hardly stand it. I never have been able. So I've been trying to ask Jesus to help me and my people to not be, not to have that damning indictment when this age is up in just a few days. I've prayed that God would help us to hold true and faithful. And uh, I've worked hard at it and uh, still plan to keep working at it as long as the Lord gives me breath and I keep uh, spiritually tuned up. So a miracle took place and he said, I became as a young man in body even though I'd been in 34 to 36 hours of meeting. It was as if I was almost floating. Even coming home from Indianapolis from the waiting on God, it was like I was almost floating. I became like a young man. I guess it wasn't 17, but it was like a young man in his 20s or 30s. Now that's in prime anyway, 20s and 30s. Such strength in every respect. In other words, he's not telling everything, but he's telling you all the way through he had the strength of a man in his 20s and 30s. Now when I was in my 20s and 30s, before I hit 34, when my heart trouble began, I, I thought that nothing, there wasn't anything I couldn't conquer physically. Didn't make any difference how much sleep I lost, didn't make how much difference the work. When I left home in the morning, I left at 5 o'clock, I didn't get home till 11 at night. I worked for most of 10 years like that through college and through seminary and married and had a home and had a job and had important responsibilities. I'm telling you, it was strong, strong. I did cave in one time because I was getting two hours of sleep, working 70 hours, 60 to 70 hours a week, and finally a young body just quit, and the next thing I knew I was in the hospital, and I had exhaustion. I didn't know a young man could go down like that. But then I never did put myself to that test, trying to get two hours of sleep for as much as 10 days to 14 days, and then trying to get all my classes and trying to work all my work, work 60 to 70 hours a week. I was working too much, and I had too many responsibilities. But, you see, I was young, and I just thought... I just thought I could do it all. And uh, I found out that even a young man can't, but I didn't break my health then. God had mercy on me, and I recovered in about a week. So, but he's telling us that he was very strong. You know, some evangelists, now here's what I want you to see. Some evangelists have two to 400,000, it should be, 
It's all changed now? Are there? All right. It's two to 400,000 praying for them. If you want to know why these evangelists are so young looking, if you want to know why they've made it, you want to know why they've done so well, they've done so well, my friends, because some of them have two to four million. But he, but he can spread it out by saying two to 400,000 people. That comes right in. That's why they're making it. That's why they can make it with such tremendous responsibilities. That's why their ministries are being blessed. That's why their house holding up. That's why they travel all over the world. How are they doing it? The prayer's coming right in. And he says it is a marvelous thing. He's getting two to 3,000. He needs six million. But most of the known evangelists today are getting two to 400,000 prayers a day. Listen, if you were getting that much prayer, you'd feel a lot better than you do right now. I want to promise you. Are you with me? Would you like to have it? Well, yeah, I would too. But I'll tell you, these men who are really called for this important assignment in this age, they need it. I know this is one man who needs it. He appreciates all the prayers they're getting, but he needs it. He needs it himself. It is these prayers that sustain them in such a miraculous way, which is so precious. I express my deep gratitude and appreciation for your prayers, for your having faith and believing God to do this for me at times. I have been allowed to pray for others, but seldom for myself. Only one time, I think, that he can remember. Thank you, Lauren W. Hem. Postscript. Thanks for the prayers, the flowers, all the cards and letters. Post postscript. Today is the last day of my antibiotic prescription. I do not think the doctors will be giving me any more. I am concerned because of the infection and the bacteria which set, at, which set in before surgery. That's because if you cannot get the water out of the bladder, then you, there's bacteria in there that will cause trouble. And he, he's concerned about that. Uh, post postscript two. I don't think I've ever seen this on any letter, but here it is here. Pray for all the battles. And here's where Jesus was operating while I was praying at home where the men were praying here. I am striving to do God's will according to Scripture. Parentheses. Only a few are doing likewise. He's so careful with his words. That's mighty few, my friends, in your lifetime and mine. And I need more help now than even before. May God help people to have faith to believe. I thought I would recall with you Isaiah 59, 19 in the King James when it says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That may be a little hard for us to understand, so the NIV explains it better. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will put him, that is, the enemy, to flight. And what a joy when the Holy Ghost comes upon us and we can say, Oh God, put the enemy to flight. Oh Jesus, put the enemy to flight. In the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, put the enemy. If you were with me then, I was praying right then. You probably could tell that. It put the enemy to flight. Even while I've instructing you, I've been praying. While I was talking to Sandy over the phone, going through this same thing, then I would be praying. She'd pray right with me. God would operate. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, Jesus, put the enemy to flight. Put the enemy to flight. Lord, the enemies come in like a flood. There's battles he can't even tell us about. The most important, he isn't mentioning them at all. But, oh, God, we ask you to put the enemy to flight. Put him to flight, Jesus. Get him on the run. Oh, praise God. That's a joy. In the name of Jesus, through the blood, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, one of the angels said. Hallelujah. And then the final postscript. Pray for Martha Louise Cullum, who is so sick. Also, James Flora, who is suffering severely with his head. He believes that's coming from the liver. And while I was with Mrs. Helm last week, she said, pray for Nancy, she told me. So I bring that to you. Also pray for John and Martha's encouragement. The devil is fighting so hard at three houses. Ah, oh, my friends, look at that. That little house on the corner right there where Edward used to live. There's the home built by faith. And across right there are three houses. And visualizing that in our mind, there's ways to pray. I prayed, Lord, I said, put a, put a wall of fire around those homes. I said, Jesus, I said, come down from heaven. And Lord Jesus, I plead this day free from affliction. You promised him 
some time ago, and this wife will be 77 her next birthday. I ask you in the name of Jesus. Sound like two good numbers to me. Lord, I ask you to come down on her and grant that day from affliction. Let that fall over on him, Jesus. And then, Lord, go to Martha and John's house. Heal Martha in the name of Jesus. Heal John in the name of Jesus. There's James across the street. Heal James of this awful liver disease. Lord, take this pain out of his head. Lord, lift, Mar- lift Nancy up. She's probably the most gifted next to him. Oh, God, take these burdens off. Lord, let him feel these prayers from Scott Depot. Let him feel the prayers of the saints. I ask in Jesus' name. Oh, Heavenly Father, send angels down. Send some more in, Lord. We haven't got enough help. Let our prayers stand for a hundred or for a thousand or for a hundred thousand or for two hundred thousand. Oh, Jesus, come down and help them. We pray in Jesus' name. You know how long it took me to go through this letter? One hour. You guessed it. And I didn't spend too much time with anything at that. But I thought if I brought it to you tonight, put the letter in your hand, by God's grace, that you and I would enter into continuous prayer. We pray without ceasing. We've got the petitions in our hands that serve more for, than for this particular illness. And I believe God helping, Jesus will help us in a wonderful way. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Sanctify this to our hearts. Lord, you said tonight that some of us would hear. I don't know who that was, but you know who it is. or you know, Maybe it's more than two or three. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So, Lord, it could be 20 or 30. And if that is, that'd be the greatest number I think I've heard outside of one waiting where we had over a thousand people. So, Jesus, we're asking in thy name that you would help the importance of prayer to sink in our hearts. And I was sincere when I said, if you leave anyone out, leave me. But because I believe if you pray for him, God will have mercy on me. If I direct my people to pray for him, God will have mercy upon my soul. Lord, help us to pray more than just a passing slap at it. And family prayer, that isn't going to do it. He said the effectual, fervent prayer. That's more God help Brother Him day. That isn't effectual, and that's not fervent. Furthermore, we've got to be righteous. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. <laughs> that's pleading the blood. That's keeping, that's getting to church when we're supposed to all the time. And that's keeping the essentials. And that's uh, being righteous and having the blood uh, wash away our sins and come against the carnal nature. And then, then we're to pray effectually and fervently by God's grace. Flash prayers while we're working. Not to cause us any trouble uh, at work. That wouldn't be a good uh, thing. But just along with the water fountain and at noon and on the way to work and on the way back and in the kitchen. And those of us who have schedules at home, that's that, that, there comes that hour of prayer. Not family prayer, not our daily Bible reading and all that. But that's, that's where we get into the place of effectual fervent prayer. And we pray and we cry to Jesus. And we ask him to deliver the servant of the Lord and the saints of God. Thank you for helping us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.